All right, man. It's been a while since we talked about some professional wrestling. Not that oh, sports man. entertainment bullshit. Professional wrestling. Last time we talked about it, we were talking about CM Punk returning. Well, since then, good God, a lot of shit has changed in the business, man. A lot, a lot, a lot of things has changed. AEW, one of the biggest hall of signings I have seen in a very, very long time. Probably the biggest free agent hall of signings since the early like 96 WCW. I mean, Daniel Bryanson. Yeah. Oh, Brian Danielson. My bad. I'm still fun calling him by the whole fucking name. Yeah, I know. We, we don't know his it, name. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Fuck, it's been a minute. Ruby Soho, which I thought was a great signing for their women's division. Just yesterday, Bobby Fish, which is insane. And the big one, in my opinion, the big I always feel like I always feel like just a shout out to Bobby Fish. I always wanted my mustache to be like a little bit like his. Oh yeah. I think I think I still try to take it. You can probably bit get like, that shit, dude. It's I'll just, try, man. He has One the day. best fucking facial hair in professional wrestling. Let me just say that right now. I love it. It looks down. clean every single time. And the big tuna for them, the one that I think will be as eventually the face of AEW, Adam Cole, baby. To me, to this day, I still cannot believe that the WWE lost Adam freaking. Talk Cole. about you know, and they throw around the phrase like, you know, dropping the ball. But how the fuck do you drop that many and that alone? You know, longest, longest reigning champ of, you know, technically the best era of NXT Easily, that will yes. ever that will ever happen again. Sadly. Well, yeah. And we'll um, get to that. Yeah. Um, and you had all that. And I think it's and it not even I think it's absolutely given and shown now that NXT was the best place to be. NXT was fun. It really was the cool thing that everybody wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Until AEW decided to show up and decided to show them what it was what was the cool company. That was an AEW really, spot, or was it Vince trying to weaponize NXT into being competition versus AEW during it those was Wednesday without Night Wars? Out a doubt, one hundred fucking percent, the lunatic known as Vincent K. McMahon. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been said in certain podcasts now. Actually, giving shout out to you know the greats, uh, you know Jericho. Had said it, and I think a lot of people nowadays are like, "Oh, Jericho's just going to talk shit on WWE." Good. Why wouldn't he? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and the whole kind of idea of like, "Oh, ex WWE guys shouldn't say anything bad." Why? Why? How? Who hasn't had a bad job or a bad boss in their lifetime that they haven't wanted to go on record and be like, "You know what? I'm going to say some shit that people yeah. haven't heard." Granted, in wrestling, I feel like today there's a lot of stuff that everybody's heard and. Snap. But Jericho said it best when it really was you you got the Wednesday Night Wars, mm. which really didn't again from the wrestlers that worked both companies during the time and everything, it was never a war. It was never a battle. And hearing some of the guys like Adam Cole himself say, like, he was really just focused on his stuff. He was focused Smart. on his work exactly. Yeah. And but Vince McMahon saw that as no, you had your one opportunity and one chance to beat them and you didn't. So now I'm going to take control. As if Raw and SmackDown was doing any better, which we all know they weren't. And that's what brings us to now, to NXT 2.0. Oh, good God, man. It looks like Nickelodeon just like took a shit and what came out was the colorful, the new colorful, but yet edgy NXT yeah, I love 2. that. 0. I love you it. Send too. out, you send Mandy Rose out there, and you guys think you're edgy. I'm like Vince McMahon clearly doesn't even remember his own product anymore. You didn't like the whole Loomis condom scene that they were like, "That's edgy that stuff was, right there." That's added to I, stuff. I haven't liked Dexter Loomis since he became Dexter Loomis. So I mean, yeah, I, I still don't. You know what? I've never been a fan of it. I never got the hype. I understand. I never even liked that whole storyline to begin with. I think no. it diminished what Johnny Gargano has always been, which is one of the best technical wrestlers in the world. And then to just shove him in this like Dexter Loomis marriage storyline. Oh well, yeah. Me, just cringe. And, and I, I think that, and I think alone, and a lot of people kind of argued and were on the same side of it saying like, Oh, it really showed what Johnny could do and make work. 
Granted, yeah. Yeah. But also, was it better than seeing Johnny go after, you know, the world title? Go after the, uh, the, uh, how's the other one title called? The North American? North American, thank yeah. you. Um, it, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, no, it was like the skits with Candace were funny and stuff like that. Yeah, like, they like caught that on. But it just was like, yeah, we're really doing this more. And then now, you you know, since 2.0 has started, Johnny hasn't really been there. Yeah, Sure, you got Champa as the, you know, champion, but that's not going to last long. Yeah, he's just a placeholder at this point. And... Which I, I understand it. And I'll, I'll go as far as to say this. I have not been a fan of this new NXT 2.0. Um, I think I understand what they're trying to do with this newer talent, even though some of the gimmicks are god awful. Feels like a lot of tryhards are just trying to throw shit at a wall and hope it sticks. Um, but the one wrestler that they've introduced that I am a fan of, but good God, do I hate his name? And I won't even fucking say oh it because God. he's a goddamn Steiner. And that's it. There is no other fucking name to give this man. Rex Steiner just rolled off the tongue so fucking perfectly well. Love his look. Love the way he wrestles. He sounds exactly like his Uncle Scott. It looks almost exactly like Scott. It has the yeah, build, it's, it's the mold funny. of a Steiner. Yeah, it's, it's funny insane. how much more he looks like Scott than his it own really dad. Is. Like he, he, <laughs> really, yeah. if he bleached his goatee, he would be the next. He would, version. He would literally be. Yeah, yeah, he would literally be right before Steiner like joined the NWO. Yep, mm-hmm. and never say never. I think it would be funny as hell if he went that full route. Um, yeah. The, the kid's going to make it. He's oh, yeah. going to be huge. Phenomenal. Um, Love his wrestling, man. That kid has so much potential. He should be. Look, they have so much. They've done so much to ruin their youth in the WWE, where they still, in this day, in 2021, rely on, on relics like wrestlers like Bill Goldberg, who are still getting fucking marquee matches for whatever fucking reason. Um to the point where in a few years, they're not going to really have anybody to fall back and just hope that Roman sticks around because other than that, what else do you really have? I don't know how long AJ is going to do this. Um, who knows yeah. how long this edge return lasts. Um, Seth is great every now and then, but at the same time, I'm not the biggest fan. I, I just never have been. Um, but then you look at a guy like Steiner, and that's a guy that you could build big time. You know, he should be the youngest champion in the company's history. He should be built like a badass dude. And that's the one thing that they have done right, other than that ridiculously stupid ass fucking name that they've given him. Why even start him off with that stupid name? And you even when brought it, this which, up in like in discussions before we did recording. You give yeah. him the Braun name when you just fired a well, fucking Braun say, a few like, months ago. Which which name really irks you more? Or is is worse? You think? Like, do you think they could have? St- well, obviously they could have. Yeah. His fucking real name is Bronson. Why you couldn't have just called him Bronson? Honestly. You know what I mean? Especially when his you go last with double name, B's in his it last name is Rex Steiner. Why you couldn't just call him Rex Steiner? <laughs> you had at least you had I'm gonna say you had at least five other names before the ones they ended up with. Before the one that you ended up and even if you didn't want to keep the last name Steiner, out of all the fucking possible names in the world. Mm. Ask McGillicuddy. No one's using that anymore. <laughs> Ask fucking uh, Harris. You know what I mean? No yeah. one's using that anymore. Hell, you could call him Rotunda. No one's going to know who the fuck that is. Nope. It's ridiculous how quickly I think if anybody wanted to argue and still does want to argue that Vince McMahon taking over, and again, that's arguable still, being like, well, no, he's not really. Yes, he is. Yeah. The biggest sign that Vince McMahon took your company over or took your show over anyway is when someone is named Braun Breaker. That is just done. Yeah. End of discussion. Easily. And then when you see who it is, it adds even more just distaste to when you're trying to talk about and again, arguably in this generation, you're trying to talk about professional wrestling. Not that I'm, I'm not talking about sports entertainment. Talking about someone that is cut from the fucking cloth of a wrestler, and now yeah. you're gonna throw that at him. And, and again, he, and how this can you even argued. like escape it when he has the no. fucking look, the voice, the style? He wrestles exact. It's almost like watching Scott Steiner went into a fucking time machine, and that's what came out. That's literally what it is. Yeah. It's not even like oh, it's very close. No, it's literally the same 
fucking guy. And, and even when you then have him do his little promos, which like, granted, yeah, definitely his weakest game, like his uncle and father, but that didn't stop them. That did not stop them at all from still doing what they did. Mm-hmm. So again, you can fucking strap the rocket to his back. He's going to be a name. But again, argued in this you know, sport, I believe that sometimes they say that a name isn't the killer or isn't that. I disagree. The I name do. is the first thing that people hear mm. and the first thing that they put a sight to. If they do not know you as a wrestler at all, do name your name face. is what's exactly your yep. name is what's going to sell that first ticket. And if sorry, someone's named Braun Breaker to me, that's not going to be the one that I would want to pay money to go see. Yeah. Even if you're like, oh, he's, he's, he's undefeated, he's this and that. I don't care. Name alone, right off that, I'd be like, that's a stupid fucking name. Yeah, exactly. And, and especially if you're going to book him to the moon, which it seems like they are. I expect them to be Ciampa at Halloween Havoc. It's the right move to make. Obviously, Ciampa has been there the longest, and he just doesn't need that belt. Let's be honest. You know, Ciampa's had his run. and then It's just kind of sad. It's, it's going to be sad, though, because it's like, although I agree, mm-hmm. he doesn't need the belt anymore. He's already made the belt more than it should be when he was the champ. Yeah. But he's barely had it this reign. And I, I agree. I do not see that match going his way. No. So it's one of those things, once again, wow, you really are just putting the final nail in whatever version of NXT that was. And then again, now you see uh, Swerve and Hit Row got drafted. Austin Theory just got drafted. This is his second time. Let's see if he can stick it out in the roster and I doubt this it. time. And I doubt it. Yeah. And honestly, for his sake, I don't think he should. I think he should have goddamn so many times already had a good, decent single run in NXT. Yeah. Probably still to date the best champion that Evolve history ever had. And, and to he's see only what been, he's done. He's only been, and this is no offense to Gargano because he's not booking this, but he's been just Gargano's lackey in NXT. Pretty much. You yeah. haven't gotten to see they, what he can do. They had time to do more stuff with that, and they didn't even do it. So that's the yeah. other thing. Like they had opportunities to make that meaningful, and, and they did, did nothing it. with it. Yeah, and with Hit Row, and like they got really angry themselves or blocking people on Twitter because people were saying, "I don't think I saw that." It's too like everybody was saying it might be a little bit too soon for them to be on the main roster. Um, and I agree with that. I think they were phenomenal in NXT. I think they should have had a bigger run there. Maybe a little bit more championships. Here's the thing. Swerve is the North American champion. He hasn't defended the fucking belt since winning it. That's insane. How the fuck does he get drafted to SmackDown as the North American champion? And by the way, that draft is so fucking stupid. The fact that this draft doesn't even matter for another three weeks because they're so focused on Vince's fucking blood money show that they're going to hold off all these title things but still have a draft because they're trying to compete with Monday Night Football. They're trying to win the demo because here comes AEW. Forget AEW competing with NXT. Those days are fucking long gone. We lost. AEW we lost. is climbing up to the ranks of getting there near Raw. SmackDown's killing it because Roman's still a big draw, and that's the only fucking person that's carrying the ship right now. Because yeah. on, on Raw, you just don't have anybody. I know the draft might fix things. After the draft, I will say Raw does have a better roster at this point. I don't expect them to do right by it, though. For a three-hour no. show, they're going to fuck Not that enough. roster up, and SmackDown's still going to be the better produced, better book show for whatever fucking reason. It's probably the Heyman factor. So back to hit row. I, just, I think it's a little too soon for them. I think I would have rather have seen them do more. And it's not me giving credit to NXT 2.0, but they actually fit the, what the fuck they're trying to do on 2.0. Yeah. They wanted to reach um, a younger audience. Yet this week's show, the medium audience range <laughs> was 62 years old. That's insane. That, that is lost, insane, yeah, that dude. I guess JR was, JR was stoked that Mandy and uh, Gigi were on TV. But, you know, other than that, I, exactly. But to stand by what you're saying, is it too soon for someone like Swerve to get drafted? No. No. Is no. it too soon for the other three? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I know their names. Um, but <laughs> it's one of those things I'm like, because again, Swerve is your main focus. So you never even like gave any kind of like, maybe they did deserve a meaningful chance, but you didn't even give them an opportunity to have the other two go for a tag team. Yeah, and that, when yeah. you clearly could have had Isaiah as the main guy going for hell, yes, he had the North American, 
What if you at one time actually positioned him to go after the world title? Then it makes yeah. sense. Now he's got his team. He's got his stable with him. Mm-hmm. So I think so because now, easily enough, they're going to SmackDown. Yeah. So who stayed? Which belt was on SmackDown? The US or the IC? Uh, the U. Fuck. Well, did Damian Priest get drafted to SmackDown or what? Pretty sure Damian staying I'm... on. On, I think the IC staying on. Okay, the IC staying on SmackDown because I remember Sheamus tweeted this shit during the draft. Okay. That's the only reason I caught it on my Twitter, like real quick. Um, so the IC is on SmackDown, US is on Raw. So if Swerve so, was to go for any belt, you go for the IC title. But it's like and and cool, but it's like yeah, I you know, and then one, like you just brought up, like Swerve could have gone for the NXT title once, and I'm still gonna call him Steiner. But once Steiner defeats Champa. Yeah, who the fuck else is up in line that you could just throw? Exactly. A swerve would be a perfect fucking first rivalry because Steiner to me, they're saying they're booking him as a heel. He, to me, he just oozes a baby face at the moment with the colors yeah. and, all and the way he um, talks. Well, it's very like baby it's, faces. It's hard because him as a heel is just gonna be that very thin line between like cross and between that's terrible. any other big guy that's just like I'm, I'm the big guy here, and yeah. it's like. Yeah, sure. He has to be again, the charismatic babyface. It just suits him more yeah. for the way he looks, the color that he wears. He could be an in between right now. I feel yeah, like he doesn't have to like be labeled. Can, but Swerve yeah. would be the perfect first fucking rivalry for a kid that, that's learning yep. the game still, who's coming from the Steiner bloodline. Swerve is perfect out of him as somebody that could be a competitor for. Obviously, he has that rivalry with Escobar, which I love Escobar as well. I know. That's another one I would have loved to have seen them continue to flesh out because that's another stable versus another decent stable. Them going on to smack them, my thing isn't even that more so that they're ready. It's the fact that do I really trust them to even keep those four together in the long no, run? That's the bigger no, yeah. Three of I'm, them are gonna I'm, be forgotten like real fucking quick. I'm that's more that. shocked. I'm more shocked they didn't just split them up as it was. I'm shocked that we didn't just see Swerve get drafted. It would have been less of a shock. It just would have been like, oh wow, okay, I guess that team's done. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, because if you could do it for Austin Theory. Yeah, no pun intended. In theory, give him himself and take him away from Gargano's family. Why couldn't Swerve, who is already a solo champion, who has already done a multitude of things in NXT, just mm-hmm. shown up on SmackDown, which I think would have been better him by himself? Because I just I look at that SmackDown roster, I don't see where he fits. I, I, I see yeah. a, 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 Jeff Hardy's there as long as till his contract expires and he dips to Jacksonville. Sheamus is there. Ricochet's there. He's going to be lost in that shuffle of guys in the mid card. And, well, and that's right there, right off the bat. Would I love to see another ricochet swerve? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be anything that should be marketed on television? No. Yeah. Because 10 minute placement are, match on SmackDown. Yeah. And chances are we're not going to get to see that match anytime soon because they're probably going to go over different shit. And yeah. I, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, again, yeah, like you said, there's enough variables in it where I'm like, can it happen? Can it make like sense and work? Sure. Is it probably going to? Probably not. Probably not. No. And that's the other thing again, where you had someone having a lot to show for it on NXT. Not going to be the same case on the main roster. You can't trust the main roster creative to write the way. And boy, you can't even trust them on NXT anymore. Honestly, with Bruce no. and Vince well, now, yeah. producing that. What do you think about um, Gabe Stevenson literally skipping NXT and just going yeah. straight to the um, main roster, man. I think that's another thing that in any locker room, I'd be ticked uh, off from it. Like guys like pissed. Gargano, yeah. whose contract is coming up. Yeah, and I think that's the bigger issue is that if this guy shows up and has you know the respect through the roof, awesome. That's goes without saying, but it's still that you just skip the line, man. Yeah, especially. In the terms of, oh, NXT no longer going to be, you know, 30 to 40 year old. It's going to be all these young guys, blah, blah, blah. And you just had someone that has no, uh, sorry, but like no real training. No. They're banking you know, on him being a gold medalist like it did with Kurt. But the difference is, and I hate when people bring this up because like, well, Kurt was Olympic. Well, yeah, he was. But Kurt had charisma. Kurt could provoke the fans he could talk he could speak i've never seen this motherfucker speak once in his life the only ever time i heard him oh. speak was when he was in court being accused of a fucking bad shit and because of a minnesota loophole he got out of that situation and that's the only time i've ever heard anything of him 
like, congratulations, you're probably a phenomenal wrestler in the Olympics. That's a whole fucking different and, thing and, than yeah. coming into the business of professional wrestling where it's not just wrestling. He's got to be able to speak. And I know he is protected by Brock. I know Brock is, like, the biggest oh, okay. is that de it? facto of being, like, this kid got it. He could be good. I so think Brock's, so Brock's trying to now be the uh, the Mr. Perfect, unless you watch the uh, mm-hmm. fucking plane ride from hell. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, I, I'm not going to call him Henning because everybody always fucks it up. Mr. Perfect was a huge supporter of Lesnar in the early days and mm-hmm. helped him. So same way that then kind of Lesnar kept that going already with, we jokingly said, but with Perfect's kid, yeah, you know? Um, I think it's good. You definitely need someone like that. And obviously, Lesnar is obviously that dude has power, guy. Yeah, but it's still you know holding the door open for someone can only help them so long. Mm-hmm. And you haven't you seen know, anything from him to to think otherwise until it happens. No. I just think of somebody that's in NXT, somebody even like Kevin Owens, soon to be back to his his indie name because I well, guarantee you that that Kevin will leave at some point. And, and I think there's a lot of variables between that. Obviously, the Mount Rushmore wrestling is over there in AEW. He could do that again. Obviously, the AEW getting the rights to Owen Hart is going to be a big fucking reason that yeah. he's going to want to be there because obviously we know Kevin is a massive mark for Owen Hart and who isn't at this point, um, which I thought was such a fucking smart thing by AEW, just something that oh, should have been done a lot. The Owen Hart Cup is just such a fucking awesome thing to do because obviously well, WWE was never going to be allowed to do it anyways. No, and it's cool of itself, and everybody can argue, but also I'm someone in the modern era that has, you know, you and I both have read and seen enough stuff nowadays to where we at least know quite a bit of everybody's side. Yeah. Well. So it's honestly great that the heart name more so is going to get some actual credit mm. and more so the Owen Hart and a shout out absolutely to his family because you know they weren't going to do this for oh, fuck anybody no. else yeah and granted Debbie had every opportunity to to maybe at least try a little bit harder and i honestly believe they didn't so where someone failed guess what someone's about to succeed and I think that's where we're going to see a boom in probably a lot more Canadian wrestlers showing up. Yeah. I think we'll definitely see a lot more legendary Canadian wrestlers probably show up. I would love to see Lance Storm show up, whether it's just like, I don't know if he's going to wrestle, but just to be there. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked because, again, sure, he's under contract, but for how long? I would be shocked if WWE drops the ball yet again with Davey Boy. And he waits it out and goes to AEW. I would love to see Davey Boy do something else because we've already seen WWE kind of fuck him over yep. at some point. Um, but I think Hell, the power... I say, I say take it one step further. If Davey Boy can get out, let fucking Tyson Kidd show up. I was up about then. to say, that's, I think to I'm me like, that's the biggest you know, variable of him being back in WWE is Tyson. And that's yeah. the guy, like, people always say, like, well, well, who else is better in WWE backstage that could do... That could fix the product in writing because WWE is stupid. And they just hire fucking soap opera and comedy writers to write their fucking scripts. There's a guy like, like Tyson Kidd who books the women's matches almost and does a fantastic job with that division because he actually knows what the fuck he's talking. Jason Jordan's another one who yep. has done a great job. Those are two guys that they should be leaning on. Not guys like Bruce Pritchard who, bless his soul, love the podcast. But brother, your time has passed. You guys, oh, yeah. you and Vince do not know in 2021 how to make a new star. And for anybody that says, well, Roman Reigns, let me tell you something. Roman Reigns was not going to come back unless he got creative control. Yeah. And thank God he did it because it's been the best fucking decision he's ever made in his career. Because if it wasn't because of the pandemic and because he took control, he would be coming out with the same fucking stupid ass shield music with the same yeah. stupid bulletproof vest doing the same fucking gimmick. And it would just be nauseating at this point. It would, so guys it like would. Jason, Yeah. W wants to fix the product right away. Give the keys to fucking Jason Jordan types. Can let them fucking move the movement but davy boy would be great i mean fucking i would team him up with pillman jr in a heartbeat and and fucking throw kevin in there do your own damn heart dynasty do it over there right. in fucking AEW. It, it would be great but back to kevin it's like his contract expires in january a lot of people thought it was like a three-year two-year deal and you could tell the way they're booking him already that like his foot's already out the door oh yeah. this guy has no interest in anything that's going on there and then sammy's contract expires 
sooner rather than later. Then the Gargano's contract expires sooner rather than later. Did you see that uh, the the news on Gargano's Twitter? Uh, yeah, he took I, off uh, what the WWE or the NXT. Take thing, off bro. WWE and NXT and wrote pro wrestler. That just so, speaks volumes. That just yeah. yells volumes of somebody that is gonna just thrive. That, here's the thing. Obviously, AEW. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I love AEW. I'm, I'm very pro AEW. I'm not gonna sit here and be like they should sign every motherfucker that's available. No. Obviously, there's there's other places that these guys like Gargano's one of them that I would love to see kill it in MLW. Who now has has a deal, a TV deal with Vice. That that would be a great land. I think him and Hammerstone and fucking I guess Osprey is gonna show up at some point in the fall. They have a decent roster that's starting to build up. They have some hype behind yeah. it. Hell, he can he can go to the, the sinking ship still in Ring of Honor that still seems to have no fucking direction whatsoever. He could go to Impact and do whatever the fuck he wants to do. That. There's options out there. So I'm not going to just sit here and be like, hey, they should sign anybody because it's going to come I, to the I point agree. where that roster is going to be too stacked and you can't eventually lose everybody. You're already hearing rumblings of of somebody like a Brian Cage who's already bitching and moaning that he's not being used properly. Well, Brian, you've had this issue Every single place you've gone to. I was going to say, every place I've yeah. heard. But that's so. going to be the issue with some other guys as well, I'm assuming. Eventually, we'll, we'll probably cross that bridge. The AEW, at some point, is not going to be able to keep every single guy they have and then also sign these bigger names. Um, but the big ones that they have signed, like I, I, it's insane. We knew Ruby Soho was going. We knew Brian was going. We knew CM Punk was going. That was a given. Cole was just a fucking sledgehammer to the face for WWE where it's like holy shit you had this guy in your building with his contract already expired all you were doing was giving him extensions because he wanted to finish the storyline with Kyle O'Reilly you had him meet Which, with Vince in, on a Smackdown fucking taping to great have for fucking, him just to even sorry to cut yeah, you off no, you're good, brother. let alone already being upset and you know and he's been nice about it but it's like again obviously being frustrated hearing possible creative news for you going to the main roster which i don't know if you've heard biggest two things that they told him right about were they wanted him to probably cut his hair and they told him that he was probably gonna get a name change it, listen and to the reaction like, he gets every fucking night on aew that's the guy exactly. they want to change that's insane. you're gonna change it's just insane again to think that they know that they think they know what they're talking about yeah with someone like adam cole or anybody like him where and I think he had said for over 14 years, he's built the Adam Cole name in Reign of Honor, every Indies, PWG, everywhere, Japan. NXT, New Japan. And then to be, you know, basically told, oh, you've done such a good job. This is what we're now going to do to show you that you're a good worker. Yeah. We're going to fucking take everything from you and basically start you at day one. And see if it works. And it would have failed. It would have been horrible. It would have been miserable to see. It would have been just awful to do that to somebody who literally just has to put his fucking two fingers up like this and get the reaction that he fucking gets. And your first thought is, we got to change your name. We got to completely rebrand you. Because it goes back to Vince just being like, if I didn't push you, if I didn't create you, I got to remake you to somebody yep. that I envisioned for a guy who doesn't know how to fucking make a star anyways. So God bless him for actually getting the fuck out of there because that was probably the best career decision he could make. Um, oh, yeah. I just, I can't believe that they had him in their office and they they talked to him. The person I feel the worst for is Hunter. I really do. Obviously, oh, um, yeah. shout out to Hunter. I hope whatever health conditions that he's having is getting better. That shit's sketchy stuff. It's even sketchier that while he's dealing with all that, Vince is just undermining everything that he built in NXT, even though the rumors are, well, Sean's still there. Yeah, well, how much power does Sean have against Vince and Bruce being in the Exactly. Table? There's only so much yeah. that Sean can do, especially when Hunter's on the mend. But Hunter fucking built that shit to the top. And before AEW, like you said, NXT was the biggest fucking thing in professional wrestling. It was the most popular thing. It gave you the best matches, the best quality promos, the best quality rivalries. And all that work is fucking gone. And it's insane to me that somebody like Nick Khan, who was a fucking agent before he went to WWE, shows up and now has more power than Hunter ever has or ever will have. And it's like, what the fuck does this guy have on the McMahon? That he's just like, it's like, how the fuck does this guy have so much goddamn power randomly where he's just like, he, he tells Vince what to do. He books what he has to bug. He has communication with other things. It's like, you're losing talent. As this shit yeah. goes on, 
It's like you're not improving. I know SmackDown's numbers have gone up. I know Raw's numbers have gone up, but that's because of the draft. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I just I don't understand the direction. I don't get 2.0. I don't really care for any of the main roster shit other than Roman. And even then, I'm already kind of getting tired of it, to be honest, the whole Roman thing. It's just very dull to me to see the whole. Well, you can only run its course so long. And but they don't, and that's the thing. It's the same thing every single week. When they compare to Kenny Omega and the Elite, every single that's week funny. they're doing something stupidly funny, ridiculously yeah. funny that makes me laugh. It's not the same. Acknowledge me, blah blah blah. Paul, do oh. a promo. It's the same rehash it every week. Fucking Kenny goes out there, does something stupid. The Young Bucks have a new piercing every goddamn week. They're all wearing the most douchebag, colored way Jordans that they could fucking find. They have Brandon Cutler, who's just the cameraman for BT, being the biggest stooge, yeah. the funniest stooge since probably fake Sting in NWO. It just works. It's the shit that works. And um, I, I just, it's insane how one show is booked and how the other show is booked. I, but again, I just can't help to bring up Adam again. How do you let somebody with that talent go? How do you let that guy go? He is the biggest fucking thing in professional wrestling that has so uh, much fucking potential. I think it just really like started, but also again, it doesn't diminish anything. I think really honestly, to me, once you lost Tommy End, the the that ship too. just because another name, even when you first lost Samoa Joe, you know, like how do you how do you not have something for these huge names that yeah, easily enough you can say, oh, these huge names that have been everywhere. But when you really think about it, those names didn't have to be where they've been. They're names. They would have been a star in any company they were in. And the fact that you had them and did nothing with them. It's insane. It's is, insane. And I don't even know Samoa Joe's injured, to be honest with you. I think I have he no was idea. a champion. Fucking Vince and Bruce show up. And like always, Vince just doesn't get Samoa Joe. He thinks he's too overweight. He doesn't get the fucking gimmick. He's like, I want to rebrand. I want a new fucking NXT champion. Yeah, Tommaso think, is there. And I'll just make him the fucking the midterm title for now. I think that's the biggest thing, too. Like, moving forward, I don't think Samoa Joe is going to come back. At least not to NXT. Um, I think they will try some half-assed way of having him go to the main roster if he were to return. But like you said, I think it'll be very similar to now what we hear, you know, Brian talk about. Vince wanted to protect him at all costs from the mm-hmm. ring. Granted, I think Vince sees Brian differently as Samoa Joe, but I think on that similar aspect, immediately will be the same thing of, well, no, what if he's going to get hurt? What if he's going to do this? What? So it's just going to be, oh, Samoa Joe's back, and he's back on the commentary. Yep. Or yeah, maybe even maybe even a less role. You know yep. what I mean? So Maybe the Jason Jordan role or the Tyson fucking yeah. kid role, right? Just like you're producing for NXT now. And, and if that is what that person wants to do, then fine. But clearly he was okay to start wrestling again. Yeah. Same way that Brian's good to wrestle again. Same way yeah. Edge is good to wrestle again. All these names that have proven it, that can't always be your excuse. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think it absolutely was that Vince and other shitheads came back or took charge and they took charge and got rid of who they wanted. And, I, you know... I wouldn't be surprised if Snow Joe was maybe a little bit injured, but definitely not anything like Not to crucial. the extent that they were like, he has to drop the title now, right before yeah. the new fucking NXT premiere. That was just very weird. It was on a Sunday, two days away from the yeah. new NXT premiering. That's when you decide to be like, you're injured. Get the fuck off the title. And yeah. We're going to move on, and we're going to introduce all these fucking new guys, and we're going to move forward with this. It just felt very... Uh, the timing just felt weird and wrong. And, and I just, that's, that's what and I if he is too. injured, I take everything I said back. I, I do not know. That's True. not something yeah. I'm, I'm sourced in. I'm just saying I just it was a weird thing to happen two days before your rebrand of the show that you sacrificed because you wanted to get rid of AEW. And, and more so yeah. into that, um, I, I don't I, I love everything they've done so far with CM Punk Dan, and Brian Sin and all them and fucking Adam Cole. I've, I've loved everything they've done. I, I think they've they signed those guys and they've used them perfectly. I think all the storylines are. I love that Punk is there and he's a man of his word. He's working with young talent. Like, if Punk mm-hmm. wanted to, he could just fucking flip, like, just do this and the title's his. Let's be honest. It's Probably, like, yeah. I mean, Punk. Are you really going to tell Punk you're not going to win it? And then seeing Omega versus Danielson 
a non-title match. That's good shit. Fucking time limit draw. I love the time limit bullshit. I know it's a very New Japan thing. I dig it because it just it adds a little stipulation that yeah it works. It really it really works when it works and it yeah. works. Yeah, so. and it was it was a good spot. Um, I just I, it's getting very interesting. I just have no faith in the WWE product at this moment. I think no, they're making too and much. Even the Becky shit, like I don't care. I yeah. really don't give a fuck I think, about that. Shit I think anymore. the thing that bums me out, and you know this too, and like everybody does. I was such a huge fan of NXT since since oh, yeah. the humble beginnings. You carry that flag. I tried, man, yeah. and I think now it's now. Yeah, it's become well now. WWE product, it's across the board now. Before it used to be, well, at least NXT is good. Mm-hmm. Sorry, because granted, yeah, they still have great talent, yeah. but I don't know if we're going to see all that talent. I don't know if all that talent's going to get used, and I don't know if I want to wait around to see. You know what I mean? Whereas, granted, yeah, now it's not on the same day. So you can choose to watch all these things, but do you want to be, you know, insulted or do you want to watch something for a couple hours and be like, that was really good? Yeah. You know, whereas you might not like everything on AEW, but you're still probably going to be tuned into it a hell of a lot more than Raw or SmackDown these days. And if someone argues with me on that, you're wrong. They're, they're like, absolutely wrong. There's there's no I, way of even debating that. Just simply the fact that, and you look at the people that lost, man. Tommy and Andrade, Adam Cole, yeah. Bobby Fish. I won't count CM Punk. I'll, I'll count. I'll count um, Danielson because he was well, there. Well, we're not even we're not even putting into the names that haven't signed yet. So oh, Buddy yeah. Murphy, gonna, Braun Buddy Strowman, Murphy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. fucking the Fiend. Yeah, uh, like all these names that have not even shown up yet, <laughs> which still might. But you have impact gunning for these guys. You still Which have I Japan like, I think, opening I think the Bray's door. a good the impact's a good spot for Bray. I don't think I think yeah. I think Bray and Buddy both could go to Impact and give that company some name. Well, I they think would Buddy's be the big stars there. Easily. I think Buddy's someone else, like you said earlier, with now some of these names that maybe won't go to MLW. Buddy's a name that absolutely I think. I think MLW is doing well right now with someone like Hammerstone, especially. Yeah. And with the crowd and talent they have to where they can keep kind of having maybe not the biggest names but now with their tv deal i hope best for them Mm -hmm. but again they're another company that people can go to like you said ring of honor they're still going they someone could go there and do something it's just yeah their options are endless right now and for wrestlers are starting to finally realize that well, even even like Cardona, look what the fuck he's done since he got the fuck out of exactly. WWE. He's killing it right now. He says this is probably a renaissance of his career. Matt, oh, he absolutely. wasn't doing shit, and now he's having fucking amazing matches at GCW, fucking killing it. And now he's like actually using the internet title with Effie, and it's funny as fuck. Yep. It just everything that he's been doing, the gimmick, the look, the merchandise is just oh, yeah. all work. The fucking the paps fucking deal that he has yeah, with he them. has everything going right this now. This is a guy that's not even signed to a full-time contract with anybody really, other than Impact, oh. but he's barely even there, and he's doing yeah. everything else with GCW, and it's just fucking working. So I don't... I, it's just it's a weird time for WWE to be playing politics and telling them that this is the way it has to be, because it's not it's not 2000 fucking 8 anymore. It's not 2000 fucking 12, no. 2000. You're not the only fucking show in the rodeo. There, there's more fucking companies oh. coming up, and with Tony Khan having the, the abundance of money he has to continue to build his show... The other thing is, all these other companies, like you said, like MLW, they're finding a TV deal. They feel like they have a chance to make a fucking some noise, and good for them. They should. Every other wrestling company out there should feel right now that right now is a renaissance, that the, the days of it just being Vincent Candy McMahon's company, and that's it. Those days are yeah. long gone, and I'm glad they are because that's one of the things that made me kind of check out of wrestling for the longest time. And um, I think right now is a really good time. Like you said, um, Hammerstone, spoiler, is the new MLW champion, both titles now. Um, that's good for him. Always been a fan. And um, we'll see how everything else goes. I do have one question. I know we did a little question uh-huh. thing on, on, on IG before we end this. We this always try. Episode. Two episodes this week, ladies and gentlemen. It's fun fucking times going on. Pumping here. them out, guys. Just pumping them out. Um, we got a new question here. What's a scary uh-huh. movie? I know this has nothing to do with professional wrestling, but we're, we're changing the subjects. Question segment of the show. What's a scary movie you're excited to see coming out this year? Well, by far, it's Halloween Kills. I just that's that's 
the movie I'm mostly looking forward to, if I look at all the other ones, I know the new Resident Evil trailer dropped. So good. I liked it, man. I saw a lot of people complaining about the CGI Fucking and the acting. And it's knock it off. Compared to what we used to have with Resident Evil, I'm like, compared I to love the, this shit, man. Compared to literally the Fast and the Furious franchise of like <laughs> horror movies. Yeah. And it hurts me to even say that those movies are technically horror, but I guess they are. But God and damn, some talk about away. a movie that just sucked more than the one before it. And we got like what and six then, of them, five of them? Are really uh, fucking pieces. Probably of shit at least them. at least six or seven, dude. Easy. And yeah, it's again. Wow, go figure. Just take the fucking original, concept. you know, <laughs> concept of it and run with it. Wow, like. But what I think shock. they finally, I think they finally got it. I think it'll be, you know, regardless if they then keep making stuff. Uh, it looks because I saw that it said it's only in theaters so like that. I thought that this was going to be like a Netflix thing. Is that another Resident Evil? So that's the thing that a lot of people have like thought too. Um, so Netflix is making an animated series of Resident Evil. Okay. Yeah. So I that's going to be that's going to be its thing. own. Yeah. People because they don't fucking put animated. They just keep. It's both just called Resident Evil. That's why this movie, yeah. I think, is, what is it called? Like, it's like Welcome, Welcome to, to Raccoon, Raccoon City. City. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's the only like difference between that. And they're and the going animated. back, dude. They said uh, in the trailer, this is like 1998. Yeah, they're doing like, this They're shit. literally going to the mansion, going all the way. You saw the staircase, dogs. Man, fuck you it, saw the bro. staircase. You saw yeah. the liquor. Yep. So it's like... And my biggest they're... thing I saw, like the biggest complaints was the acting. I'm like, it's fine. I get it. The, not some of the actors might not do great, but at the same time, I'm not looking for Oscar winning performances for fucking no. Resident Evil. I, exactly. I want to care about what the they look like and all that shit they're going through. Another complaint I saw was that I guess they're putting one, two, and three all together into this one movie. And I think we talked about that previously. It's like, you don't know if this is going to be successful and you're going to get the chance to make another well, one yeah. or, or uh, even three of them so putting i mean together, i can understand why but it's not a yeah. video game obviously video games are gonna be fucking well, fleshed out and i mean those those of us that are fans of the video games them putting one and two together makes perfect sense mm. i can see it ending with nemesis yeah i don't think so i mean like would they put number three in that technically no but again i'm like yeah like this isn't a video game this is a movie now yeah. So if you were to take some of that, and not a lot of people even know all that backstory, they know no. enough of like the gist of things. But like I said, easy enough. Have the movie be its own thing up until the very end in credits, even an after credit scene of Nemesis getting there or being made, any and all little things. And then yeah, yeah. At least then you have something to go to if. Same as Mortal Kombat. You know what I mean? At least you open the door to be like, let's see, you know, and I guess That's we'll wait and see. But... That fucking movie was. Yeah, exactly. We'll wait and see. None of us are really in anticipation, but it depends yeah, who we... Johnny Cage is going to be. That's going to be the saving grace for that for me. Depends on who right. Johnny Cage is and if they kill Cole. Uh, then I think that's a great sequel. But, then, you know, yeah, they completely take opening him credits. Out. Opening credits. Cole needs to die like the original Johnny Cage. Did. I was about to say that. Wasn't there a Mortal Just, Kombat where one of the mains died boom. in the beginning? Just get it yeah, over. Johnny, yeah, Johnny Cage. So, Rip that band aid off. My WB. But yeah, man. So yeah, the, the the horror movie I am looking forward to the most though is Halloween Kills. I don't, I don't know if that's the same for you for now um, because right I can't think now, of another one. Right now, it's it would be a tie between Halloween and Resident Evil. Okay. Resident Evil comes out in November, so twenty fourth Thanksgiving. Yeah, Fuck so yeah. it's so on Thanksgiving. Good for them. I didn't even put that together. Um, out of any other like you know horror movies, and I'm such like an asshole, I guess these days where most horror movies don't appeal to me. Yeah. So oh, yeah. even like the newer takes a ones lot. that are. Yeah, even the newer ones that are supposed to be like theatrical and stuff like that, it really depends on what it is. Obviously, Halloween's one that I'm like, yeah, right on. And the one that just came out before obviously makes me want to see this one mm. just as much. Um, Resident Evil, because of how it looks and because of the material and because of going back to, you know, our childhoods playing that. Yeah. So seeing the actual version, it gets me excited. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm definitely interested. Um, other than that, no, I think that's about it right now. Especially with the um, question saying this year, because if it was just in general, I would say if I'm, it was in I'm, general, I'm looking yeah. forward to Scream. I, I am 
really interested to see I'm, what that looks like. I'm interested just to see what happens. Obviously, Arquette's made a fucking playback, so I mean, he's he's doing something. So I'm always interested yeah. in seeing what he's got. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I mean, I think it just depends. There's some movies that are still obviously being talked about. There's still a newer Evil Dead coming out eventually. Um, there's yeah, still talks too, about even Friday though, 13th. So the Evil Dead script is like a yeah, I don't, know, I, know. I don't know how I feel about it taking place in the apartment, but yeah, whatever. I know, right? Again, another Evil Dead with no Ash. I'm still just like, you got it, you got it, okay. I, I still think the last, the last, the last Evil Dead well movie, the last, the last Evil Dead movie was so good, and the way it ended with the post credit scene, it should just continue that story. But it is what it yep. is. I mean, that, like you said, there's a lot of concepts. A new paranormal activity looks like dog shit. I, I advise nobody to watch that movie or even watch the trailer. Um, don't waste your fucking time. Don't waste your fucking eyesight. It's not worth it. I didn't um, waste my time with the original, so I'm not going to do yeah. that shit. But talking about that, I know if you're free next week, we'll probably most likely do a Halloween Kills review because that does drop finally Ooh. next week, and that's going to be big time. It's when not is, next week. Come out? I think Thursday night on Peacock and theaters. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. I'll be down. That's if not definitely... next week, the week before that, that, that will probably most likely be the next video. You will see us do our, our full review of the next installment of Michael Myers' Halloween Kills. But ladies and gentlemen, two fucking episodes this week. We're pumping them out like Rossi said. We are. We're we on a roll right now. We will see you guys very soon for the next Halloween Kills movie review. We will see you guys. You guys have a wonderful weekend, a safe night. You guys have a good night. See you guys later. <laughs>